Welcome and thank you for joining us on Birth Mother Matters in Adoption with Kelly Rourke Scary and me, Ron Rains, where we delve into the issues of adoption from every angle of the adoption triad. Do what's best for your kid and for yourself because if you can't take care of yourself, you're definitely not going to be able to take care of that kid and that's not fair. And I know that my daughter will be well taken care of with them. Don't have an abortion. Give this child a chance. All I could think about was needing to save my son. My name is Kelly Rourke Scary. I am the executive director, president, and co-founder of Building Arizona Families Adoption Agency, the Donna K. Evans Foundation, and creator of the You Before Me campaign. I have a bachelor's degree in family studies and human development and a master's degree in education with an emphasis in school counseling. I was adopted at the age of three days, born to a teen birth mother, raised in a closed adoption and reunited with my birth mother in 2007. I have worked in the adoption field for over 15 years. And I'm Ron Raines. I've worked in radio since 1999. I was the co-host of two successful morning shows in Prescott, Arizona. Now I work for my wife, who's an adoption attorney, and I'm able to combine these two great passions and share them on this podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure to rate and review us on whatever platform you use to listen to us and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Look for AZ Adopt Podcast. Today on Birth Mother Matters in Adoption, we're going to hear from a few different Building Arizona families' birth mothers and how adoption has impacted their life. First up, we'll hear from Vicki about her open adoption and her relationships with her son and the adopting families she's chosen. We'll also hear about how open and closed adoptions have affected her life. It started in 2014. I did not know what to do. I was lost. I was in the middle of an addiction. Um, an awful relationship. So that is the main reason why I chose building Arizona families so I could give the child a better life. Um, it was tough, but at the end, it's beautiful. I have an amazing relationship with the family. Um, he is now what, five years old, and I see them every year. <laughs> um, so it's been every January for the past five years, I get to see my little son in person. So the relationship I built with, with family is just one like I never thought it would happen like it did. So every January, uh, they'll come down for a couple of weeks. They also have family here in Arizona. So they come and visit. But for uh, the whole day, I can spend with, with him. It's amazing. The relationship I have with, with, with my son and with the family is just so incredible. It brings, you know, great peace and, and, and you know, happiness knowing that, you know, he's well taken care of, he's happy, you know. He knows that I'm his mom, but, you know, they're his parents. Um, they celebrate uh, once a year um, Adoption Day, you know, so Noel knows that, you know, who he is and where he's come from. So it's, it's, it's really amazing. The, uh, the willingness and, and love and, and everything that this family has and how they even want him to know, you know, where he, exactly he came from. That's why I also chose to do um, the adoption I did last year. The, this family, they're... They're great. I don't know much about them yet. You know, he just turned one years old two days ago. I skip my updates and and he's doing really well. He, he seems very happy. But this relationship, it's going to take a while just like it did with the first one. You know, I, I can't say it's going to turn out the same. I hope it does. 
but if not, that's okay too. The main support I had was from building your own families. Um, my families and friends, they were, you know, really against it, especially my sister. Um, they, you know, a lot of them told me, you know, abortion is the best way to go. And I will never choose abortion over giving a child, you know, a better life. The main support I, I had and that kept me strong through this journey is my other children. You know, knowing that they needed me to take care of them and be a mom to them, you know, was my main priority. Um, I will say open adoption was, it gave me more peace. You know, knowing that I was have my updates, I was still know about the child um, and he wouldn't, you know, be lost when he got older. He would know who I was. Um, I have a sister that was adopted. Um, and, and she just, just got in contact with the family after, you know, searching on social media and all kinds of things. She had found, we found us on, um, on messenger and she had messaged me, you know, she, her name is Sharon. She said, you don't know who I am and I don't know who you are, but I believe we share the same mother. And that was like just a shocker, you know. And I, I, I didn't want the boys to be lost, like how she feels. So that, that's why I chose open adoption, to give them their, their comfort, you know. Adoption means to me family. Even though it's it's extended in a way, but it's family. You build that relationship throughout their entire years, um, and and if the girls are lucky, they'll have an awesome relationship like I have with my family, and it's something words you can't put into words. It's. It's a blessing. It truly is. The next birth mother we'll hear from is Sadari, and she's going to show us the strength that she has for her children. I've had a very rough life, and I have other beautiful kids. And basically, it's like you have to woman up and know when right now is not the good time and it takes two yes but if you're in this on your own making this decision is the right way because i feel like if you know you're not in a good space or you can't mentally or physically be there for that child why not help someone that isn't capable of doing what you did and that's have a child. So I womaned up and told myself like, this is not the time. I love all my kids and I always will. And they'll come back to me and I'll let them know the same way I am now. I was young, I was running the streets. I was doing too much I was, and I needed to be slowed down and I'd rather you have the best life ever than to see you struggle with me. And it will always be that way. Yes, it hurts. No, it's not easy giving up your child at all. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's plenty of nights I've cried and my mom had to hold me and tell me it's gonna be all right, but I know that he is gonna have a great life. I know he's gonna have the best abilities and he'll be okay. It hurts, <laughs> yeah. But you gotta stay strong and understand that what you did is the right thing. Because anything can happen to that child. Any slip up can happen while you're out running the streets or you do what you do, I don't judge people. But you have to think about the safety of that child. You have to think about 
the well-being of that child. What happens when he runs out of, he or she runs out of boxes of diapers or clothes and you don't have money, what do you do? You don't want to get stuck in that position. I had support from my mother. She's been my rock this whole time. I cried so hard, she's like, baby, this is the right choice. Usually she'll fight for her grandkids, but she understands. My, I, I can't take anymore. Yes, he, he'll be 18 and he can make his choice to find me. And when he does, I'll let him know. I love you with everything in me. You came for me, you'll always be a part of me. But I had to make that choice. And you're with somebody that loves you just the way I love you. Takes care of you just the way you would want me to. I gave her a life. And that's never gonna be something that's tiny or you can brush it off. That's an ultimate, like, decision to give someone your child another life is very very hard but at the same time it's the most beautiful thing in the world and for other women I tell you you're not making a mistake you're not choosing the wrong thing you're not giving up on your kids you're just being a mother, and you're doing what you're supposed to. Protect your child. Now we're going to talk with Danielle, and she's going to talk about how she came to terms with her struggles, doubts, and emotions going through the adoption process. I'm Danielle, and this is my story. Um, so in... Um, <laughs> December of 2020, I found out I was pregnant. Um, I haven't been pregnant in 15 years, so I was kind of in shock. <laughs> I didn't think I could get pregnant um, anymore. Um, so uh, me and my boyfriend, Larry, um, we were over at a friend's house and there was a girl there and she was pregnant and she told me about this adoption agency that she was going to because you know, she wasn't fit to take care of her baby. And so um, she gave me the phone number and we called and we went to Building Arizona Families. Um, we set up an appointment, we went uh, for a couple hours, which was fine, a lot of questions, but I'm really glad that we did. Um, so the next time after that interview, um, we met with the caseworker and we, there was no families yet you know and I didn't really know what to think about it um, I never really paid attention to adoption um, I just know I wasn't for abortion um, so um, the caseworker that we had um, she actually wound up leaving which she was really nice and she actually um, showed us the profiles um, right before she left um, we went through about five uh, profiles and one of the profiles just caught my attention and I had Larry read it and it caught his attention and so we picked the family. Um, the family couldn't have kids, you know, they had no kids of their own, they were married and just their whole profile just was, just I had to pick them. I just knew that they were the right people to pick. So um, at this point I didn't really have like so much emotion, I didn't know you know, I just was going with what was happening and I didn't really try to pay attention to it too much. <clears throat> I just knew that it was gonna be really emotional, you know, going to the doctors and getting all the pictures of the ultrasounds and everything like that, you know. The more I, the more he grew, when I found out it was a boy, the more he grew, the more I got attached to him and I was like, oh God. How am I gonna do this? You know, I was struggling with the, okay, do I get my stuff together? Can I get my stuff together? Or do I just, you know, can I tell this family no, never mind? You know, and I was going through that and I'm like, how do I tell them no? 
but I can't tell them no because I don't know if I could do it, you know. <clears throat> I got pictures of, you know, when they found out the gender of the baby, they sent pictures of a nursery that they, you know, his room. I'm like, there's no way that I could just tell this family no. Sorry, I, you know, change my mind. No way. <clears throat> so I talked to the family more. We talked on the phone a bunch of times, you know, and got to know them. And, you know, they would say, what's your cravings for the week? You know, and it was it was cool to talk to them. We bonded with them over the phone and everything. And so once that started, I got to the point where I'm like, OK, I didn't I couldn't even think about saying no. I'm you know, I can't do it anymore. I was just set. I just have to do it. <clears throat> and you know towards the end it was really hard because you know I just I loved him you know and I didn't even you know he I didn't even know him he was just growing inside me and I just it was one of those connections where Larry couldn't feel as strong as the connection that I had you know even though he would you know lay there and talk to him and <clears throat> stuff like that you know I just, well anyways, August um, comes and the baby's born. <laughs> um, he was seven pounds, five ounces, and he was so cute. The family came down. They actually surprised me and met me before the baby was born for my birthday, which was a couple days before. And I thought that was really nice of them. You know, they're really nice people. Um, just in what I read in their profile was just how they were in person even better in person than the profile. And what stood out about their profile too is that they both still had their parents. Their both parents were still married and for 40 something years and that just was like, wow. You know, so, and regardless, you know, I'd always want whatever happened, you know, in my life, I would always want, you know, him to have uh, parents, you know, that I know would stay together, you know, and I know that it seemed like they were the type of couple that would always be together, you know. And so um, now at this point, I'm on this roller coaster of emotion, like, you know, just randomly I just start crying, you know, because I felt like maybe guilty that I, you know, gave him to another family, but then I didn't feel guilty. I felt proud of myself everybody was proud of me you know um some people were like no don't do it all you know take your baby and I'm like no I can't you know well um building Arizona families you know they helped me too with counseling I talked to the counselor you know they're very nice you know anything you need they're you know they're there for your whole way um <clears throat> and uh, to this day, um, I know that my son will be taken care of, you know, um, with the family. I was able to see him before he went to back to Kentucky, and um, it was probably the best visit that I had. My mom was down here. Larry's mom came, you know, it was very nice. Um, we needed that time to you know see the baby and um, I'm happy that I made the decision and I had Larry's you know decision as well that it was a good thing um, I know that you know the family will keep in touch with me um, it's I'm glad it's open um, I don't know how it'd be if it was closed I don't know how things would be different maybe harder if it was closed but um some people don't want that you know connection with the family because they feel you know whatever but um i feel good about it to this day now you know i'm not as sad as i was i'm more happy um and i'm more happy that they're they want me to be in his life or you know know who i am so i'm making a book um for the family for him too and Larry's gonna do that with me and um, that's really a story um, it's hard to explain the emotions because 
they came and went and it was like waves. <laughs> but um, I feel better overall and um, take advice from me or don't take advice from me, but adoption with the building Arizona families and going with your gut is the way to go. <laughs> We want to thank all the birth mothers who shared their stories with us to put on this podcast, and we also want to thank you for joining us on Birth Mother Matters in Adoption. If you're pregnant and considering adoption, we are here for you and understand what you're going through. We've helped hundreds of women place their babies for adoption, and we want to help you as well. We have a pregnancy crisis hotline available 24-7 by phone or text at 623-695-4112, or you can reach us on our toll-free number at 1-800-340-9665. We can make an immediate appointment with you to get you to a safe place, provide food and clothing, and help you get started on creating an Arizona adoption plan, or just give you more information. Check out our blogs on our website at azpregnancyhelp.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by looking for AZ Adopt Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure to rate and review us on whatever platform you use to listen to us. Birth Mother Matters and Adoption was written and produced by Kelly Rourke Scary and edited by me. Thanks go out to Grapes for letting us use their song, I Don't Know, as our theme song. Join us next time on Birth Mother Matters and Adoption. For Kelly Rourke Scary, I'm Ron Raines, and we'll see you then.